this unfortunately not a surprise really but it is at the same time so very offensive and so very wrong this from Russia today experiment on kids cross sex hormone therapy aged down to 8 to 8 years old and US government funded study a doctor has found cross sex hormones may now be given to US children as young as 8 in a government supported research program Despite the risk these drugs can pose, a doctor skeptical of transitioning gender dysphoric kids has discovered. Imagine giving eight-year-old girls testosterone, Dr. Michael Laidlaw told a Heritage Foundation panel. They are in third or fourth grade. This is unbelievable, but this is going on. Laidlaw, an endocrinologist, discovered via a Freedom of Information Act request that the minimum age for administration of cross-sex hormones had been lowered from 13 to 8 in a large five-year study being conducted at the Children's Hospital Los Angeles. There's a quote here saying this whole thing is an experiment on children. And yes, when we get into the depths of this, I don't know how you can call it anything else. Laidlaw blamed the National Institutes of Health for allowing unethical research to be conducted on children and ad- adolescents, as Dr. Joanna Olson Kennedy, who runs the Los Angeles study, received a $5.7 million grant from the NIH. And there's also a bit here from Health Impact News, same story, just a little bit more information. Um, there's 30, more than 30 clinics for transgender children in the United States. Olson Kennedy's clinic out there in Los Angeles. The Center for Trans Youth Health and Development at Children's Hospital Los Angeles is the country's largest, treating 725 children. Her youngest patient is three years old because, yes, obviously a three-year-old completely knows whether or not they're supposed to be a boy or a girl. With no questions asked, they have a completely firm grasp on that better than adults do. Obviously, I speak in jest. They do not. Uh, But but anyway, the government gave a $5.7 million grant to Dr. Olson Kennedy. Such experiments, Laidlaw believes, are being used to push the timetable for transgender-affirming therapy forward in the absence of any clinical indication that this is a good idea or is at all healthy for the children. At one point, he even suggested that there's little to stop these researchers from merely removing the gonads of a four- or five-year-old child who identifies as transgender as an ad hoc puberty blocker in a rush to affirm their identity. And one of the things that we're certainly finding is it's not just doctors, but it's parents that are making the decision and are really pushing this that I'm going to raise or we're going to raise our child in the opposite sex or the opposite gender. And the child is a victim in this. And yet, those who, I'll say it, those hearts who, those whose hearts and minds have been spiritually darkened are playing right along with it. Already, children as young as eight or nine can be given puberty blockers. Uh, Now, again, keep in mind, this is messing with what God created. This is messing with nature. Uh, This is messing with the natural development of human beings to give them these chemical, untested, I'll add, chemical drugs, puberty blockers. Uh, You know, when one goes through the change of puberty, uh, there's already hormones that that are... flowing i'm you know not claiming to be obviously an expert on this even though i along with everybody has been through puberty or everybody of a certain age but uh, you already have hormones that are reacting interacting and so on and so forth that cause what have you that we're going to add this chemical mix into the equation to actually block or delay puberty from even taking place But anyway, children as young as 8 or 9 can be given puberty blockers, which halt the child's development 
into an adult of their biological sex in preparation for taking the cross-sex hormones which bestow the secondary sex characteristics of the opposite, according to Endocrine Society and American Academy of Pediatrics AAP guidelines. So let's just double up on the untested pharmaceutical chemicals. Nothing can go wrong, right? Well, these drugs have not been FDA approved for this purpose and must be prescribed off-label and their known side effects because imagine that, drugs having side effects. Their known side effects include interruption of normal brain and bone development. Now, again, these are kids. As well as increased risk of heart attack, stroke, and various types of cancer because we don't already have a childhood disease epidemic that's come about in this country anyway. Whether it is obesity, whether it is diabetes, whether it is cancer, uh, what have you. No, no, we got to mess around and play mad scientist to, you know, to, to bow to political correctness, to completely throw out biological and objective truth to completely throw God and what God has created and as he has created it out of the equation totally so we can make them be happy in their delusions or even pick their delusions for them and and assign them their delusions Uh, they're going to have some delusions all right I don't think they're going to like him very well when it's all said and done. At the UK's notoriously progressive Tavistock Gender Clinic, girls treated with these drugs have reported greater emotional problems, dissatisfaction with their bodies, and even self-harm, Oxford professor Michael Biggs found after filing an FOIA request. Worse, puberty blockers are administered on a wholly unscientific basis, Laidlaw said, relying on the child's gender identity, which a recent court case defined as a person's core internal sense of their own gender as the primary criteria for initiating treatment. So again, just let the child, you know, study after study after study, statistic after statistic after statistic. About 85% is the number that I've seen of children who say, well, I'm really the opposite sex or gender of of what you believe, about 85% of them eventually grow out of it. But we're not going to allow them to grow out of it because that allows the truth to come forth, but rather we're going to put them in our own little sadistic experiment with puberty blockers and and cross-sex hormones that cause all sorts of side effects harming children right and left God doesn't like it I can guarantee that well why do you say that what did he say about if you offend a child that it's not something you want to do it's not a road you want to go down to harm a child. They're naturally so trusting, especially at the younger ages, naturally so trusting and impressionable to start with. Laidlaw said, there is no objective test to diagnose this, he said, yet we are giving very harmful therapies on the basis of no objective diagnosis. While proponents of gender-affirming therapy downplay the risk of young teens and even preteens making decisions that will impact the rest of their lives, hormone therapy, both puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones, also usually renders the child sterile, a risk many children are not forward-thinking enough to consider. The Heritage Panel featured detransitioner Walt Hayer, who I've actually did a show on in the past, who called the current model of treatment child abuse and said he has spoken to many transgender individuals who called transitioning the biggest mistake of their lives. For parents who believe they are placing their trust in doctors knowing what's best for their child, 
Panelist Dr. Marian Rutigliano revealed that the AAP's 2016 guidelines on caring for trans-identifying children were written by a 12-person panel on which less than half the members were even physicians, led by a 25-year-old trans-identified female. And one of those physicians worked at a clinic in which every single child who came in for a consultation, every single child who came in for a consultation was considered, quote, appropriate for transition. Doctors who do not attempt to stand up to the current vogue in transitioning kids are bullied or harassed into silence, often losing their positions, Rotigliano said. This is, like I said, this is dark, spiritually speaking. This is evil. This is nothing but confusion, delusion, taking advantage of the trust, of the trust of a child. You've got people, and I don't know whether it was real, whether it wasn't real, but you got people that get all upset about Pizzagate, even today, when actually, if you look at just even Child Protective Services in pretty much every state, that's really where you should focus most of your outrage, probably, when it comes to trafficking of children. Perhaps you know that, perhaps you don't. Uh, enough said. But, um, and, and some of those, to be fair, would be upset and are upset at this type of thing as well, without a doubt. But uh, this is, like I said, just completely taking advantage of the impressionability, the innocence of young children, eight-year-olds. Even three-year-olds at the one clinic out there in Los Angeles that received five points over $5 million. Uh, this from stream.org. Transgenderism, the fastest-growing insanity the world has ever seen. This movement is pushing for an unregulated live experiment on children. Uh, the author, Tom Gilson, um, he wrote a book, I guess, Critical Conversations, A Christian Parent's Guide to Discussing Homosexuality with Teens. But he was, um, he was at a, 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 an event or at a meeting, um, at an appearance, and he asked, how many of you think that the transgender movement has been going about it for a decade or more? Um, matter of fact, right here in the beginning of the article, he, he asked, speaking before a group on the topics of homosexuality and transgenderism, he asked, how many of you would say the transgender revolution has been going on 10 years now? Raise your hands, please. said almost half of them did. Well, in terms of the public, uh, public guy, um, it, it's been about four years is, is what he says, but decades worth of damage in four short years. And he said, news from Great Britain underscores that. The Tavistock Center in London, which I mentioned, is the United Kingdom's only publicly funded clinic treating transgender children and adolescents. Five clinicians have just resigned from there over concerns children were being incorrectly diagnosed with gender dysphoria, according to the Daily Mail. The same report quotes Carl Hennigan, director of the Center of Evidence-Based Medicine at Oxford University, given paucity of evidence, the off-label use of drugs and gender dysphoria treatment largely means an unregulated live experiment on children. And again, it goes back to what I just said a while back. These drugs are untested. These drugs are... There, there's no way to determine that they're safe. We know that they cause side effects, and they're just letting it rip. Not giving a care as to what effect it has physically, health-wise, either immediately or down the road on children. Again, let me say that again, on children. And uh, Gilson says, let that sink in, don't rush past it. This movement is pushing for an unregulated live experiment on children. He says, this is evil, it's growing fast. For years, the Tavistock Center received about 50 transgender referrals a year, 
last year had got about that many per week. Um, the actual total 